a really interesting study here that you sent to us. This is from The Lancet. This is a study associating meat consumption and type 2 diabetes. Okay, and it's a really big study. It is. Okay, take it away. Let's start at the very end, and then we'll work back through some of the details. I love that. Ultimately, what their interpretation was, was that the consumption of meat, particularly processed meat and unprocessed red meat, is a risk factor for developing type 2 diabetes across populations. Okay. The findings highlight the importance of reducing meat consumption for public health and should inform dietary guidelines. And you're quoting from the study? Yes. Okay. Greater consumption of each of the three types of meat, which in this case were? Processed meat, unprocessed red meat, and poultry. Got it. So their big thing was a lot of these studies look at, currently that exist, they look at uh, red meat, processed meat, always under the spotlight. Well, what about poultry? We're always telling people to substitute with chicken, turkey, eggs, and such. Yep. That'll drive you know better health outcomes. And their their thought was, well, there's there's you know maybe the verdict is still out on that. So to take the interpretation one step further, looking at some of the numbers, mm-hmm. uh, they found essentially a ten percent excess risk of type two diabetes when consuming a hundred grams per day or more of unprocessed red meat. Okay. There was a 15% excess risk per 50 grams of processed meat. And then there was an 8% increased risk when, when consuming a hundred grams a day or more of poultry. And so they found that there were positive associations, which eat with each of those groups. So later they do wow. later they do establish that if you were to th- substitute in some of their other analyses if you were to substitute poultry let's say for red meat or processed meat that you decrease this risk of type 2 diabetes in doing so but their big point is that say, is like hey see all meat in this case bumps up your risk of, of type two diabetes. It's not just always this demonization of red meat and processed meat. See, it's potentially the other stuff too. So we should all be vegan. I mean, ba- that's sort of like my, <laughs> that's yes. what the headlines would lead you to believe. Definitely. That's okay. how this, that's, it, that's kind of how this was presented. And sure, like that, it is what it is, right? Right. It is what it is there. But again, this is, this is correlative data. There are only, so there's only so much you can can kind of control for in these settings. You can't control for every single confounding variable. There's just a lot to be cautious of. Because my initial thought was, as somebody who, who in general have over the last five seven years, I've decreased the amount of processed meat. I've decreased the amount of unprocessed red meat in my diet, and and, and, also, and honestly, just meat consumption in general for mm-hmm. for a multitude of reasons. And so. Full transparency, I went into this with the expectation that like, yeah, this is going to further justify the way that I'm kind of bent in thinking. Uh-huh. And as I read it a little further, and as I also, I mean, Peter Atia is another person who talked about this study uh, in a, you know, in a thoughtful way and just looked at what some of the other experts in this arena were saying. It, um, you know, it did kind of open my eyes to some of the, the drawbacks that we mentioned, that this is not something that we can full hard, wholeheartedly hang our hat on and say that, see, this yeah. is why we're telling you to reduce the consumption of all these things. Um, again, it's just that we see red meat consumption. We see processed meat consumption. We see it in the context of uh, colorectal cancer. Mm-hmm. We see it other cancers. We hear it in terms of reducing you know, cardiovascular risk yep. and red meat is responsible for all these sort of things. It's just that you don't always hear about how it how it affects blood glucose and other metabolic diseases like that. Yeah, because generally speaking, it's it's stop eating the sugar, and if you need to eat something, eat some meat instead. Exactly, I mean, or a vegetable. But yes, and so again, it was uh, they 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 were the authors of the study were very excited, and for good reason that they pulled more of a it's a huge study. Yeah, and they they pulled a larger amount of people, and they also pulled in this aspect of poultry that, that just kind of automatically gets the free pass. And yeah. I, right. I mean, yeah. that's kind of, Hey, you know, what are we telling people or what do we hear? You know, it's kind of like a back of napkin roll. It's like, maybe it's a good idea to, you know, instead of eating, you know, ribeye every night, you mix in some chicken and it's, they wanted to say, well, hold on, let's yeah. just, let's look at this, you know, in a, 
larger picture, what I thought my takeaway was going to be when I read this is a bit different than what my actual takeaway is yeah. based upon all these factors. Yeah. And it's just that like, look, if you have an issue ethically with red meat and meat production and environmental considerations and all of that, then I, I do feel that some of those are justified. I'm not, I'm not a global warming expert, but I, but I also can kind of see how the larger scope of how we eat at large affects things. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you have issues in that respect, sure, let that maybe guide some of your decisions, but to take away from these couple studies that like, we should just start attacking each other for the, for the certain patterns of, you know, red meat consumption or whatever. Um, I don't think that's, I don't think that's the ticket either, but it's also, we also can't sit here and say that, yes, yeah, see red meat and, uh, processed meat, especially my goodness. And I don't think anyone's arguing this, but red meat, especially, I don't really feel that it is a protective, mm -hmm. uh, food to be eating in the end. You know, if you look at like cancer societies and what their recommendations are for processed meat consumption and red meat consumption, I'm still leaning towards that to, to try and limit it mm -hmm. to, to certain amounts. Um, but again, I don't, I don't walk away from this with like a really hideously strong opinion. And that was another thing that really, really wanted, really drove me to talk about this is because, you know, you, all you have to do is search this title in Twitter to see some comments that come up that are divisive and, huh, I want to know who funded that study. I yeah. want to see the paper trail of that study. This is, there's clearly some shady business going on. Big vegetable paid for it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I get, and I get it. I get it. I get how actually I don't get it, but, <laughs> but it is, but it is real. Like people have their identities tied to these discussions. <laughs>